What's going on, After Buzzers? Tonight, I am here with actor, writer, producer, Patrick Kilpatrick, Hollywood's go-to guy for playing a bad guy. He's here to talk about his new book, Dying for a Living, Sins and Confessions of a Hollywood Villain and Libertine Patriot. He's also here to talk about his many years' experience in the film and TV industry. Do not move a muscle. You're tuned in to After Buzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. What's going on, After Buzzers? Here is the... Most famous, most handsome man, Patrick Kirkpatrick. Thank you for joining us tonight. Oh, God bless you. I'm very happy that you're here tonight to talk about your new book, Dying for, Dying for Living, Sins and Confessions of a Hollywood Villain and Libertine Patriot. I have to talk about the title very quickly. Yeah. What made you come up with that title? Well, it's more about gobbling every second of life. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of segues into the fact that I've played so many villains. I, I joke around and say I've been killed by every leading man, <laughs> leading lady and on Earth and in outer space. But um, it's more about from birth right to now just uh, eating it, you know, getting as much out of life as possible because we're all here for just a very short time. Mm -hmm. Now, what made you decide to write the book? Well, you know, I started as a journalist writing for most of the magazines in New York and uh, many of the ad agencies, so writing has been part of my life for 50 years and um, did a lot of screen write writing, still do. Um, but I found I had a repository after 30 years of being an actor of insider stories and uh, some inspiration in the craft and some getting over some really challenging events like a car crash and mm. that kind of thing. And I found in, in when I was in groups of telling people we'd tell stories, I, I often had a story that topped the mm. one. And it made me feel bad. I, I, um, I didn't want to be in the business of diminishing mm -hmm. others. So um, I knew I needed to find a place separate and apart from acting. You know, a lot of the screenplay writing was not autobiographical mm -hmm. in any way. So, and I had a very privileged upbringing. My dad was a World War II hero and founded Cigna Corporation. Struck out George Bush to win the National Collegial Baseball Championship. Okay. Mother had some mental health issues and a very vivid uh, affair with my high school baseball coach. Wow. And so um, I had a, a very sort of blend of highly literate, highly uh, volatile mm -hmm. upbringing. And then that took me through the New York Magazine world and Broadway and off-Broadway <laughs> and playwriting and then right into all these action villain slash uh, physicality, and so I thought that was a, a good way to go. Mm -hmm. We we broke it into two volumes, because mm -hmm. it was a 600-page manuscript. Wow. Uh, okay. First one, a uh, lot of Hollywood stuff front-loaded, because I know that's key to what people want to hear, but, um, you know, it's it's, uh, it's the inorganic brain damage, the discipline, the <laughs> insanity, the leading men who can't le learn their lines mm -hmm. or use cue cards or... So it's a little salacious in there. Oh, there's a lot of, oh, you know, biracial like affairs oh. and uh, every every other thing you can imagine. It's a juicy book. Well, you know, um, it's a tale. Mm -hmm. uh, as my lovely bride over there said, it's Tom Jones for the 21st century. Mm -hmm. um, there's politics. Okay. It's fu funny thing, the uh, agents uh, told me, take the politics out mm -hmm. first, and then Trump was elected, and they said, put the politics back. <laughs> yeah, the, everybody wants those ratings, right? Everyone wants those reviews. Mm -hmm. What was the easiest time that you had when writing your book? The easiest time was writing a chapter a week to my lady loved because I was trying to entertain her. The most <laughs> brutal thing is the proofing. There's no end to it. I worked at Time, Inc. Uh, as a highly placed writer and you know the whole company would proof things mm -hmm. and you still end up with a comma out of place mm -hmm. and uh, again I'll say Heidi my lady is a relentless proofer and uh, it doesn't matter how many eyes you put on mm -hmm. it you're gonna uh, you're gonna miss something. Yeah, of course. Actually, your, your brain is making what you think is there after a while, but the writing is a joy. Yeah, now the it, book I have right here, it's available on Amazon.com right now. Amazon.com, BarnesandNobles.com, PatrickKillPatrick.com nice. for website. Yes, an autographed copy. Oh, nice. A digital, soft cover, and hard cover. Nice, and you've got some reviews um, from James Woods, Ron Perlman, Joe Mantegna. I mean, you've got some pretty hard hitters reviewing this book. Yeah, I've, um, the critics and readers have been really great and some of my peers have been fabulous uh, and said unsolicited really great stuff mm -hmm. 
and that's coming in all the time. I just got one from Costas Mandalore and uh, Art Camacho, the great uh, legendary action director, and just wonderful things. When, uh, when you were writing the book, and even after it was finished, were you worried about any backlash from people? Have you? Do you name people by name in this book? I do. It's heavily vetted by lawyers. <laughs> um, I'm sure. Uh, I was not worried about it. I just wanted to go, first of all, you know, very interesting defamation and slander laws. Mm -hmm. um, if it happened and you were there, um, it's, and celebrities by their nature give up uh, certain rights of privacy. Mm -hmm. A private person has, uh, interestingly enough, has a much more um, uh, tighter realm of privacy uh, protection. Um, but uh, I try to do it with a loving yet uh, ruthless manner to myself as well as to others. Um, it all happened. I'm very, very uh, dedicated to make sure that that occurred. Nice. And Volume 1 is out now. Volume 1 came out um, October 3rd. We launched it at the National Press Club and the Kennedy Center for Performing Arts. Oh, perfect. Uh, just did the biggest signing in the um, at uh, Barnes & Noble's in Manhattan. Congratulations. Uh, have a whole bunch of L.A. signings coming up, Book Soup, uh, Dark Delicacies right around the corner will be January 12th. Okay. Uh, Book Soup uh, January 18th, um, Chaucer's in Santa Barbara, Burbank uh, in March. So um, we've got a lot of stuff going on. Nice. And when yeah. do you anticipate Volume 2 coming out? Uh, we're t trying to get for um, uh, Valentine's Day, okay. February 14th. Nice. Yeah. Um, I wanna... That's all show business. Of course. Yeah. Of course. I want to get into your acting history a little bit because, you know, you've appeared in over 75 hit TV shows. You've appeared in over 170 movies. Um, in a whirlwind... I think it's combined, 170 for both. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still a lot of yeah. movies and slash TV shows. In yeah. a whirlwind 18-month period, you've did five major studio films, two independents, and 27 television guest star spots on 18 different shows. You must be tired. Well, no, you know, I call it curse of a liberal arts education. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of energy. <laughs> uh, I think my lady will attest to that. Um, I, uh, you know, um, I just, uh, I early on I learned that auditioning was the key mm -hmm. to the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And um, unlike if you get a series lead where you have a character and you have the big great blessing of being able to uh, ride with that one character, I had to um, switch mm -hmm. you know, sometimes two or three times in a day, which was a great repertory um, device. In mm -hmm. England, they have about 300 theaters to do that. But here you have what's called pilot season. Yeah. And so um, you're changing in cars, and you're, if they say cry, they say be a Serbian, you're a Serbian. <laughs> and so uh, it's a great, 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 great developing device. I got through that period you described, and I thought, you know, I'm not making Bruce Willis money, but this is the greatest acting uh, developmental situation you could possibly be in. I always joke around, uh, and I do in the book, about Daniel Day-Lewis. Mm -hmm. You know, they were interviewing him for There Will Be Blood, and they said, how'd you get the voice for There Will Be Blood? He goes, well, I recorded every day little snippets, and I sent it to the director, Paul Anderson. And finally, after eight months, we came up with a voice, and I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> we have to come up with that voice in 20 minutes. Yeah. You know, um, but that's the world he lives in. Right. One movie every two years or three years. If you're a working actor in, in L.A., you're banging it down. Yeah, of so, course. Um, excluding your book, because I assume that this is your baby, uh -huh. what was your favorite project to work on? You know, very common question and a good one. Uh, hard to beat working with Steven Spielberg, mm. but... The truth is, they're like children. You love every single one of them. Of course. And um, the down and dirty, low budget ones, you know, you get there and you're doing your own dialect and you're shooting your own weapons and doing your own stunt driving five minutes after you get there, screaming improvisational dialogue. <laughs> if you're in a movie like Minority Report or Eraser or uh, Replacement Killers, there's a lot of components. Mm -hmm. And so you, there's a lot of sitting down, which is one reason why I do so much writing. You know, it's either that or get in trouble on the set. Yeah. So um, uh, I uh, I would read and I would bring my production company into the onto the set vis-a-vis -vis computers and stuff and use up the time. Right. Now, yeah. Volume 1, 
is out now. Volume two you have coming out on Valentine's Day, around Valentine's yeah. Day. What other things do you have coming up? Well, there's the movie Catalyst that play a, a pedophile priest. No snickering from the audience, please. Um, <laughs> Including me. V- very interesting experience because as reviled as that action is, you learn the sort of s- the lack of nurturing and isolation from youth is what kind of causes that behavior. Very similar to overeating or mm-hmm. smoking, uh, that kind of thing. Um, uh, Night Walk, which is, I describe it as a Romeo and Juliet uh, yeah, Western journalist meets uh, Islam beauty, uh, filmed in Morocco. I'm wearing their lovely jacket. You look tonight. very snazzy. Thank you. Um, and uh, that's coming out uh, nice. with Sean Stone, Oliver Stone's son, starring as the Western journalist. And I'm the towering vessel of hate. <laughs> um, and I got to improv my way through the whole movie and. Uh, insult every cultural group on the planet. <laughs> well, that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, I always like to close out with this. What's the best lesson you've learned throughout your career, and when did you learn it? The best, best lesson, well, I, I told you about the audition mm-hmm. being key to the kingdom. That's for working. But the cross disciplines of writing, directing, producing, and acting mm-hmm. are really key. I think the other thing is to try to maintain some kind of reality and humility about what you're doing. And um, I would call it opening yourself up to the divine, because mm-hmm. uh, then you you stay in the moment and you let um, some really wonderful things happen when you're performing. Nice. Yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Everybody, that is actor, writer, producer, Patrick Kilpatrick. Uh, his new book, Dying for a Living, Sins and Confessions of a Hollywood Villain and Libertine Patriot, is out now. You can look forward to volume two around Valentine's Day. Patrick, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you so much, and Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Merry Christmas, so, Happy yeah, Holidays. Holidays. Thank, thank you so you. much. Cheers. We'll see you guys next week. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and me, Maria Menounos, would like to thank you for tuning in to After Buzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. (laughs) The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.